This is a broadcast of SmallCapVoice.com, a financial communications and investor relations firm. SmallCapVoice.com receives payment for investor relations and financial consulting services that it provides to its clients. You should assume that officers, directors, and employees of SmallCapVoice.com or financial analysts mentioned and their families hold a position and intend to trade in these securities for their own accounts. This is not an offer or recommendation to buy or sell securities. Information in this broadcast is presented solely for informative purposes and is not intended to be nor should it be construed as investment advice. As in all investments, an investment in a featured company carries an investment risk. Listeners should review the company thoroughly with a registered investment advisor or registered stockbroker. This broadcast does not purport to be a complete study of the featured company or other companies mentioned. Information used and statements of fact have been obtained from the featured company and other sources but not verified nor guaranteed by smallcapvoice.com as to completeness or accuracy. Such information is subject to change without notice. You're wired in smallcapvoice.com. Following is a presentation of smallcapvoice.com, today's leader in investor relations, capital formation, and retail support. Now, with your online business briefing, smallcapvoice.com's Stuart T. Smith. Welcome one, welcome all to this online business briefing brought to you by smallcapvoice.com. And as you just heard, I'm your host, Stuart Smith. And we're joined once again today by Brazil Minerals Incorporated. They're traded under the ticker symbol BMIX. And we're joined once again by the chief executive officer of the company, Mark Fagasa. Mark, thanks for calling in here to smallcapvoice.com today. Thank you so much, Stuart. Thanks for inviting us. Absolutely. Well, your company has been extremely productive and busy here over the summer 2014 and late spring. We spoke to you back at the end of March 2014. If you would, catch us up on some of the major events for the company. Certainly, Stuart. We have a terrific property in Brazil called Duas Barras. It is part of a Brazilian company uh, by the name of Mineração Duas Barras, which would be uh, translated as Duas Barras Mining, which your listeners may recall we began with 55% ownership in the first quarter of 2013, and today we have achieved an 87% ownership with the goal of reaching 100% ownership before the end of this year. Uh, it is a property that produces diamonds and gold essentially daily. We have been selling rough diamonds uh, to buyers in Brazil. We have offers to sell rough diamonds to buyers abroad. We have received the export license from the Brazilian government allowing us to do so. And one of the things that we did over the summer this year is to build our own cutting and polishment center so that we can cut and polish our own rough diamonds and therefore have polished diamonds available for sale. We've made sales to a jewelry chain in Brazil with 11 stores, a chain that has been around since 1944 and they have a lot of experience. We've also uh, export our polished diamonds with the same uh, Brazilian federal license to export to the corporate headquarters here in the United States, uh, from which they were sent to the Gemological Institute of America, GIA, for certification and grading, and then sold to investors, primarily American. Uh, these investors, in fact, some of them have prepaid us for such graded and certified diamonds, which is a terrific business model. Well, it really is, and uh, some big highlights that listeners you can find in the Form 10Q for Brazil Minerals out August 21st. One thing Mark didn't touch on, I mean, he did tell you that they've been selling, but they've sold $930,000 in cash from sales of polished diamonds. There's an overview within the 10Q report that hits on several different things, but uh, lots of other things have been happening. You've also expanded your team down there, so operations are expanding, and you're getting more efficient by having shifts working, is it uh, seven days a week now, is that correct? That is correct. So the mining that we do is divided, uh, it can be divided into two different sets of workers. One is, one set of workers is in the exploration front where, uh, I'm sorry, excavation front where we excavate for the gravel that contains both diamonds and gold, and the other set of workers run the processing of such gravel in the plant. Uh, 
which is the largest alluvial processing plant for diamonds and gold in Latin America. Each day of excavation from the team of excavation uh, generates two to five days of uh, material for processing the plant. So we realized that it would be a, a really smart idea if we uh, increase the throughput in the plant. And therefore, we divided our workers in the plant. We hired some additional workers and then divided them up into two sets of workers, each set of worker, uh, workers in the plant working for four days and then taking four days off. Therefore, there are no weekends, holidays, etc. The plant processes diamonds and gold daily, 24-7, 365 days a year. And in our experience, every time that the plant is running and processing gravel, there will be production of gold and diamonds. In fact, more recently, gold has been very good to us, and we've made uh, sales almost weekly in the last uh, several weeks uh, with gold uh, retrieved from the property. And one of the things that we're doing with such sales achieved in this quarter is paying down uh uh, tradables and debt that we had in Brazil and also reinvesting in the plant. So it's it's really a, a virtual cycle that we see currently. Very good. Yeah, you point that out. You've increased your ownership in the diamond recovery plant as well as international demand for diamonds seems positive as well. The diamond trends are positive given the emergence of new consumer, consumers in developing economies such as Brazil, China, and India. Now that again is straight from the 10Q report from Brazil Minerals. So now the company also has gotten some attention. In other words, you are going to be listed in the top 200 mines in Brazil and you've also been visited by the Gemological Institute of America. So you are actually on the map at this point. You know, people are discovering that you're there. Absolutely, Stuart. The Jequitinhonha River in Brazil, where our property is located, is one of the premier rivers providing alluvial diamonds uh, in Brazil. It has it has had mining uh, in one, one, shape, one way uh, or another for over 200 years. But many of the areas that we have are virgin. And so we are getting um, excellent return on our uh, invest, invested effort because the river is blessed with uh, an enormous amount of diamonds, but also our, uh, the areas that we're exploring are very good. We have a property with uh, Minas San Duas Bas with 1,404 acres. Uh, we focus our efforts currently on about 7% of that number, so about 104 acres, which have been studied before by the predecessor company that developed the property. For this area, the 7% or 104 acres, we have a technical report that provides us with some idea of the mineralized material available, meaning character diamonds and ounces, ounces of gold. But clearly, we, we believe that we have uh, enough space um, for many, many years to come in which we would be exploring at Duas Bahas. In addition to, uh, to that that we already um, have in Duas Bahas, we went ahead and obtained four Brazil Minerals subsidiary in Brazil, certain additional diamond areas around the property, uh, because we really believe that this plant, being the largest alluvial plant in Latin America, is a Ferrari, and we want to be able to run a Ferrari for uh, many, many years, if not decades. And therefore, the number of the number of areas that we have now access to around the property um, has tripled essentially in the last. Um, uh, in, the, in the last uh, year or so, uh, meaning that uh, we believe we are here to stay and the, the quality of our production, given the number of buyers that we have inquiring uh, to buy, is a testament of the quality that we have. That's terrific, Mark. Thank you so much for a summation of what the company's been up to so far here in 2014. Well, we've got a few months left. What would you see as some of the core focus for the company or core focuses for the company here in the remainder of 2014? Well, I wanted to uh, point out that um, w one of the items that uh, that I'd like to discuss with the investors in this call is the fact that we were faced with a choice of areas where to mine for this year from the various fronts uh, or uh, subdivisions of the property that we have access to. And we chose to attack an area that was under up to 15 meters of water. And therefore, it was technically more challenging because we had to drain such water through usage of pumps and a dredge adapted for that purpose over a period of several months. We have drained about 75% of that area, 
and there's about 25% left with water. However, this area has uh, really very, very good gravel from which we can process from. So that's why we chose to undertake this technical challenge. And now we are uh, faced with uh, a good retrieval of gravel. That explains why there was perhaps less revenue that people anticipated in the first and second quarter of this year because we were attacking such a technically difficult area. Third and fourth quarter will be with already this area having been attacked and uh, and us having been able to retrieve materials from, from it. In addition to it, we believe we will have enough material outside of the plant for processing for several weeks, if not months. And therefore, what's traditionally a weak quarter for us, the first quarter of the year, may not be so because we would have already reserved material for processing. So even though it's raining during the first quarter uh, and we may not be able to excavate uh, in the area or new areas, we may have material saved to process. So those are important caveats that I wanted to um, discuss because it makes investors understand a little bit more what we had to do with and, uh, and how we see the future. Well, it is one of those business processes that has seasons. In other words, you have to deal with weather and other things like you just mentioned. Uh, and I, I see that, you know, again, reviewing the 10Q, you can see the numbers did dip. However, the company seems to be hitting its stride in a lot of different areas. And so while it's a short-term dip, Mark, your assessment then is that this technically difficult area that you got into will be worth the effort that you put into it. Is that your fair assessment of it? Yes, it is definitely that that assessment, and it, it was our choice to go into this difficult area to get it done, and that's what we're doing today. Again, we have many different areas to attack uh, in the next several months, two years, so I'm not worried at all about this. Uh, I wanted to point out to listeners that Brazil Minerals is clearly more than Duas Barras. Uh, we believe that uh, we will become the premier diamond company in Latin America. We are already highly ranked in Brazil as you know, from being listed in the top 200 mines in Brazil, uh, which will come out in, uh, in a few uh, a few months. So we know we are highly ranked in that list. And we have, as you know, been approached by the Panama Diamond Exchange, which is setting up a bourse for diamonds in Panama and really would like to work with us. In addition to this, we have properties that are not revenue generating today but have an incredible asset potential in areas such as gold and copper, titanium, vanadium, and iron. And then we have a pipeline of uh, several other things we have not announced. So we feel very uh, very comfortable with, uh, with the number of assets that we have today, and uh, we have seen the world as being uh, composed of a, you know, a part of it being block and tackle, and we're blocking, blocking and tackling duas bajas, making it a high margin operation. And, uh, the other part of it is picking the right asset to go after for the next stage with the right, right, right partner and right capital raising at the subsidiary level so that we don't dilute the investor in Brazil. That's our goal. Well, listeners, once again, that's the Chief Executive Officer of Brazil Minerals Incorporated, ticker symbol BM. I-X. That's Mark Fagasa. Mark, thank you once again for your time here today at smallcapvoice.com. Congratulations on a very productive 2014. We look forward to more great things from you and your company here in 2014 and beyond. Thanks, Mark. Thank you so much, Stuart. All right. For Mark Fagasa, this is Stuart Smith saying thanks so much for listening. Smallcapvoice.com, today's leader in investor relations, capital formation, and retail support, provides its clients with the highest level of service. Our audio interviews are disseminated to one of the largest opt-in audiences available today. How? We at smallcapvoice.com believe in aligning and affiliating ourselves with other leaders within the investor relations community. By sharing resources, each affiliated firm is made that much stronger and each client is served that much better. Our focus is to identify and provide the very best financial services and solutions available to clients and their shareholders. For more information about our services, please call us at 512-267-2430 or visit us on the web at www.smallcapvoice.com.